so we will now move on to uh, Dr. Revati's talk. Dr. Revati is the in charge of. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Manati. Yes, yes, Dr. Ribiti is in charge of the uh, cornea department, senior surgeon, very well known uh, from of Aravindai Hospitals, Coimbatore. Ocular allergy is a very, very common association with keratoconus, and she's going to talk to us on the practice patterns of management of ocular allergy in keratoconus. Thank you, Dr. Manati. It's very important that you brought out BKC as a separate uh, thing in this uh, discussion of keratoconus because this needs a lot of... Uh, uh, attention, uh, BKC in a keratoconus or keratoconus in a BKC patient, both this combination is a really worrisome one because this can be, BKC can be a predisposing factor and it's a risk factor in uh, BKC, uh, keratoconus progression and uh, as like we have seen acute hydrops is one of the uh, risk factor and not only that, in, in case of management also to decide on which type of management, BKC can be a deciding factor because it can compromise many of uh, the success of many of our managements. Uh, let us see the scenario one is a child who is presenting with VKC, um, very severe VKC. So here we have to remember that we have to first differentiate between simple allergic and VKC. Both pathology is different. And if it is a severe VKC, this is going to need a lot of, I mean a prolonged treatment over the years. And we have to remember here, steroid is the mainstay treatment, whether we like it or not. Uh, we can't just manage these kids only with um, promo, sodium promoglycate or muscle stabilizers, uh, antihistamines, all these things. We cannot manage them because uh, eye rubbing associated with this uh, in this condition can lead on to keratoconus. Uh, may not be the, the main pathology, but that can be a precipitating factor. So we have to really treat this patient seriously. Usually, like we have to explain to the parents and we can start with the low potent steroids, but we have to taper them very slowly. And we may have, we have to explain to them that they may need to be in this medication for many years. And not that like in other conditions where we are going to stop immediately, abruptly or something. And uh, in case of doubtful compliance or the ocular surface is grossly um, compromised, then we can go for uh, depot therapy also of injecting uh, the steroids in the supratarsal space. But uh, initially, usually I'll go for Decadron first to make sure that they are not steroid responders. And then I'll go for this uh, injection of tricot. So we have to double evert. First, we evert the uh, lead and then catch hold and first we used to, most of the time in children we have to do it under general anesthesia, short general anesthesia, but still I inject a little bit of uh, xylocaine so that post-operatively they will not have severe pain because this depot injection can be painful even after the injection. Then with using a large bore needle we have to give this tricot. And usually this will give a long, I mean, at least for a few months, they will be relieved of symptoms and the ocular surface also will be much better than just using topical steroid medications. And another important thing, we have to talk to the parents a lot and convince them that they have to continue this anti-allergic treatment regularly and for a long time to avoid complications like later uh, sequelae like keratoconus. And the second scenario in uh, we already child is having keratoconus and, the, uh, and also having VKC. So here we know that uh, VKC can be a risk factor for fast progression. So we have to plan for early C3R. But uh, then again, controlling the VKC well before attempting any surgical uh, intervention is very, very important because in these patients, chances for infection post uh, collagen cross-linking is more regional immune suppression as well as these children often try to touch the eye. They have long-term epithelial problems, healing problems also. Sometimes they can even develop immune infiltrates, may not be only infective. So in these patients, AP on CXL will be a better option than going for scraping the epithelium and then managing the uh, non-healing epithelium. And then we are, even if we are doing it, then we have to keep them uh, in close monitoring till the epithelium heals completely till we remove the BCL. And we have to differentiate between infective and immune infiltrates also. A sterile corneal melt is another thing which I first I heard it only in American Academy meeting, but uh, 
And later I found, uh, come to know that there are reports from India also. And one of the uh, risk factor is VKC in these patients. It usually it occurs within a month time and uh, it quite difficult to manage. But uh, we have seen interestingly another one patient who is a 21 year old male uh, underwent uh, CXL but VKC and he was on treatment then due to COVID uh, he lost follow up during that time. Uh, the CSL was done in 2014 and he presented with uh, central thinning and melt uh, in 2021 during that uh, lockdown time and um, with that great difficulty because he didn't follow the medications for VKC also. This is not his uh, picture, this is uh, the picture was similar to him and later this is his picture we had need to, uh, I tried even amniotic membrane and all then finally I need to do a small patch graft and acute hydrops as Dr. Uh, Basak told it one of the risk factor and we have to be very careful in choosing any surgical intervention in like compressions which are also in these patients and they are prone for infection so we have to be ba uh, very careful about choosing a surgical intervention. And in keratoplasty, definitely they will have more complications than in other non-VKC patients. This is one of our, from our study which we presented in the morning. Um, dark in, uh, in children, in that the VKC group had all complications like uh, epithelial healing problem and um, vascularization, infection, all those things are more in these patients definitely when compared to non-VKC uh, children. So one of such patient, uh, we, uh, we can see the florid vascularization in the um, stoma, the interface, uh, once the, because the patient lost follow up and didn't use the steroids and other treatment. And finally, this, in this condition, we may have to use steroid as a immunosuppressive sometime, not enough for like, you know, to use it two times, three times. We have to use it uh, aggressively to control the uh, reaction and control the, uh, reduce the damage. And uh, outcome in VKC compared to uh, non-VKC children, FAC et al, they have done a study in this and they again, well, visual outcome. And they found out that mixed, I mean, the astigmatic, um, astigmatism is more in these patients when compared to non-VKC patients, uh, obviously maybe because of wound healing problems, early suture um, loosening and uh, suture related problems. So in conclusion, VKC is a major comorbidity in keratoconus a risk factor in all stages of this disease and its management. So this subgroup needs more attention and more chair time. And we have to, I mean, mainly uh, because most of the time it's a children problem, the parents have to be convinced and we have to be very closely work with them to reduce complications in these patients. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Repti, until Dr. Dr. Rajesh uh, sets up his uh, presentation. Uh, where do you position uh, tacrolimus and uh, systemic uh, immunosuppression in uh, VKC patients? Yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't mention, I mentioned in the uh, slide. Yes, uh, after controlling them with the steroid, even along with that, I used to start either cyclosporine or tacrolimus. Tacrolimus, we prefer because uh, one-time application and more uh, economical also. And we have to put them in these medications. And again, uh, some of them can develop problems like uh, calaisian and... Uh, um, like hardiolum and all, these patients are more prone for infection also that we have to keep in mind when using these medications. And a systemic is, uh, I think like uh, Gokhale mentioned, like many, sometimes we have to send them to pulmonologist or allergic specialist, even systemic therapy we need to give. And uh, your comments on doing a cross-linkage for a VKC patient, what are the precautions that you would want to do before you take these patients up for uh, surgery? Uh, first, control the VKC with uh, steroids and other things, though there is a possibility of increased chance for infection uh, during surgery, but still we need to control it uh, completely, either with the topical or depot therapy of steroid, control it, and then we go. And so far, I have no experience in Epion. I think Dr. Rajesh once uh, mentioned that uh, he prefers Epion in children because of this reason. I have, I have no experience. I used to do Epi off only. But uh, we have not come across gross uh, inc uh, higher incidence of infection, but we always admit these patients for at least two days till the epithelium heals, till I remove the BCL only, then I send them off. Uh, you might just want to be a little bit careful uh, and monitor them closely till the epithelium heals, and if it takes beyond a particular uh, period of time, beyond four days that you would normally see, 
it might even make sense to actually go ahead and do an amniotic or do something to make sure that the epithelial don't allow the epithelial defect to linger on for a long time. 